The one thing you have to understand about these guys also is you could argue that guys like Branson, Musk, and Jobs, let's just focus on those three for now. These are the big names. Branson, Musk, and Jobs, all very similar stories, by the way. Multiple companies, big risks, controversial guys, uh, but let's be real, they're geniuses. Yep. You could argue that they're geniuses. You could dig into their brains and maybe do some work on them and maybe do some scans and maybe look at some IQ or some testing mechanisms and some personality scores, and you would find that among those three, they are they are legitimate geniuses. They and check all the three boxes. Of them also got very lucky along the way, which you Listen, also need. Luck is always going to come with hard work. Luck is yep. there's. I don't believe in luck. Luck is luck is the thing that happens to people who are constantly in the game, fighting and failing. That's how you get lucky. Luck doesn't happen to a guy that showed up on the scene yesterday. Luck happens to the guys who've been on the scene for ten years, twenty years, thirty years, quietly behind the scenes that nobody notices. That's how you get lucky. Little 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 contrarian lesson on luck right there. But you look at somebody like Jobs. Same thing. Um, Renegade type guy, tough to be around. Um, people didn't love working for him because he demanded so much. Super serious. Guy wore a uniform, Aaron. Most people didn't notice the uniform. The guy had a uniform. Yep, the guy would wear a black shirt like you have on every single day of the week with the same color jeans and the same shoes. You should see his closet. You ever see a picture of his closet? It looked like a military closet. He didn't yep. have any other clothes. And you want to know the reason why? I think the reason why is most instructive. The reason why he wore the black t-shirt, uh, the dark blue jeans, and the black shoes every single day of his life, especially on stage and at work, is because he didn't want to waste any brain power deciding what to put on in the morning. He said it. And I'm like, man, that's a little thing, but man, that's a big thing at the same time. I bet you he <laughs> ate the same thing every day too. Probably so because it's the same mindset. How, yep. can I, how can I use as little energy as possible on the little things that add up, by the way? Little things make a big difference, Right. So that I can, I can have as much energy and output on the big things, which was growing Apple. Getting yep. into the music business when nobody was thinking, why would you turn this device into a music device, right? iTunes back in the day. And, and don't forget, Jobs was run out of his own company. Well, this is another thing. Musk has, has, has been probably pushed. Disney was pushed. I mean, we could go on and on and on about who was pushed, right? Out of their own company because newer, younger a little bit more radical people want to come in, tend, tend to be corporate education based, no track records, but big colorful ideas. 90% of the time, you'll see these guys brought back in to save the company it just happened with Disney, right? So, so when you get the young guns that try to come in with their fancy degrees and their hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and their big ideas and their zero track records, right? They like to come in, they sound good, and they come in and they just destroy companies. I'm not going to say ever, all the time, but the majority of time. They end up having to bring a Musk back. They end up having to bring a, 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 a Jobs a jobs back. They end up having to bring a Branson back. I mean, the, the, we could go through the list of companies that this has happened to. So these guys have a special characteristic that that is worth reading and learning about. So for me, you know, Jobs was, was the one because he really was the guy who would disrupt things. And he was – I always like to look at people too or – who are, who are years ahead of their time also. This is that intuitiveness that, that, that is very rare. Can you look past today, right? You look at a Jobs, your perfect example of Branson, Jobs. Um, we, could look at, we could look at Tom Cruise in entertainment. I could look at Tom Brady in sports, right? We could look at Dan Kennedy in, in, in the small to medium-sized business world. If you read them and study them, their thought process is – two, three, four, five, 10 years ahead. Robert F. Kennedy comes to mind for me in, in the public health and political world now. These guys are taking stances now that the mainstream media is like, no way, no, how? And then three years, six years later, perfectly normal. They all, this is a very key characteristic, Aaron, is this intuitiveness and what I call this foresight. By the way, I think you and I, you know, we go back a long way, you and I. We go back to about 2005, 2006, and one of the things I've noticed about us, not trying to, you know, toot our own horns or brag a little bit here, but we have been very good at seeing a few steps ahead. In fact, I think it's even mentioned in our show intro, right? We've, we've really had a good knack for that intuitive, intuitiveness of seeing industries and seeing movements in industries a few steps ahead where we've been able to get in front of them, right? You with your agency, me with my software company, right? Us back in the day, we were internet marketing education guys before the internet marketing thing was even a word. We were teaching seminars across the world at one point on internet marketing when there wasn't even Facebook, right? 
We're teaching started before Google. We're teaching video before there's even YouTube, right? We're teaching online stuff before there's really online stuff. So people are like, what the hell is that online it's video? You mean TV? No, video, social media. What the hell's Facebook? All of that we were doing. Um, information products, Aaron. I'm la I, I launched my first information product in 2005. There wasn't even a name for the industry. An <laughs> information product, an ebook, a training a 50 page book in training online sold through Yahoo Overture search engine pre Google. This was yep. my training in 2004, 2005, 2006, around the time you and I met at an at a internet marketing seminar and event. You know, these brands were coming out. We're watching people get rich on the internet while everybody else is trying to figure out email. So, this foresight of seeing years and decades ahead to me is the jobs in the Musk in the Branson for me, another one quickly and I'll pivot it back to you before you, before yeah. you introduce that, I just want to stop you for one sure. sec. The other thing, not only the ability that these people have for foresight, but I think you also see it when they're gone was their attention to detail. I think it's Absolutely. really difficult when the, when the creative brainchild leaves and you really start to notice things. And I want to give you an example, Andrew, by the way, Buffett's another one before I forget. You see this, this yeah, is I have that too, buddy. We have this our, is my mouse. Me right? too. You have the same one. Same one. Wireless mouse. Apple. It came out after Jobs died. Did it? I can tell you without a doubt uh -huh. that Steve Jobs would have an absolute meltdown <laughs> if he saw the charger portal underneath the mouse. Well, where are you going to put it? Because it's so thin on the ends. Well, you put it at the end or he would have created something. You just make it a little that, thicker, right? The, the fact that I can't. You know, it's it. really annoying. You have to tip it on its side to charge it. You can't use it. You got to tip it on the You're side. You're absolutely if, right. If, you know, I'm, now, I'm, now Jobs, I'm actually mad talking about it. <laughs> if Steve Jobs <laughs> was still alive, this whole department right now would be fired. That's a good point, man. Because you know what, Aaron? I also have this. I, I, have, a, I have this too. This is the mouse pad. Yep. You know, the finger thing. So I have an interesting setup. I have the, the mouse to my right because I'm right-handed. But I also have this to my left because once in a while I'll move the mouse with my left hand over here. Sure. I kind of play both sides. It's really weird. People come in and they're like, why do you have a mouse on both sides of your keyboard? I'm like, well, it's, you know, uh, I, I just feel like I'm, 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 I'm overemphasized on the right. So once in a while I like to do a little left finger action. Sure. Too much information probably, but nonetheless, um, well, but, but you get that point, thing like can be put in the side <laughs> is my point. I don't have to flip it over. Well, and, and you look at like Musk, he's the same way. He still says the majority of the time he spends on his businesses is as an engineer. He's constantly yeah. creating and testing and perfecting these elements in These Tesla. guys are brilliant geniuses, engineers. Exactly right. They are, and, they and are detail, engineer minds. Detail matters to them. 